Good morning, everybody. Miss Jen here, and um, our Explorers class has been talking about oceans, and I promised I would post a reading of this book. It's a little long. It's a cat in the hat book called Wish for a Fish, and it talks all about different kinds of sea creatures you would find in different parts of the ocean. Um, and we talked that there are five layers of the ocean, and so we'll learn a little bit about that in this book. So it's Wish for a Fish, all about sea creatures, and it was written by Bonnie Worth. Now these cat in the hat books rhyme. So again, don't forget, you can chime in when you know the rhyme. I'm the cat in the hat, and I hear that you wish to go down to the sea and visit the fish. So please climb on board SS Undersea Glubber. It's made out of shark skin and very fine rubber. It will take us down deep, deep down under the sea. We will start at the top and go deep as can be. So we're about to talk about the different zones of the ocean. The top parts are sunny, the bottom parts black. We'll go to the bottom and then we'll come back. Sunny zone twilight zone, dark zone, abyss, and the trench at the bottom you won't want to miss. Sunny zone is sea level to 660 feet. The sunny zone is where our sea visit starts. Most of our sea life is found in these parts. The law of the sea is the same as on land. I'll call it the food chain so you'll understand. Big fish eat smaller fish and so on until you get down to one of the tiniest krill. Can you see that? If you're wishing for fish, there are lots of them here. I see herring and mackerel swimming quite near. Fish can lay eggs. They have fins and fish tails and most fish have bodies all covered with scales. These scales, they are coated with slippery slime. The slime keeps out germs, at least most of the time. So here you have thing one in the sunny zone. And here's a mackerel, a perch, a cod, catfish with the whiskers, and a herring. Fish open their mouths and they let water in. That's when the gills job really starts to kick in. Gills sift through the water and pull out the air. It's really oxygen. They help the fish find all the air that is there. So they're using the word air, but they mean oxygen. The jellyfish is a most interesting fella. He looks kind of like a transparent umbrella. Stay away from his tentacles, those long stringy things. They stun prey by giving off hundreds of stings. Of the hundreds of kinds of sharks in the sea, we only have time now to visit with three. The six inch long dogfish, no, it never barks. The 50 foot whale shark, the Mack truck of sharks. And what have we here? So here's your whale shark. It's called the great white for its white belly, great teeth and great big deep bite. A shark grows its teeth in neat rows in its face. When the front row wears out, the next row takes its place. Shark bodies are made of the same kind of stuff as your ears and your nose. That's what makes them so tough. The stuff is called cartilage. It folds and it bends, and when it is torn, the cartilage mends. What else can we see in this nice sunny water? Oh, say, see the manatee and hear her calf daughter. Manatees are mammals like you and me. They have lungs and give milk to their babies, you see. 
Another sea mammal we'll see is the whale. It's the largest of mammals we'll see without fail. The great whale family is split into two. Tooth whales like the orca and baleen like the blue. Baleen fills the blue whale's mouth like a grill. As water flows through it, it strains out the krill. This says the blue whale weighs tons, maybe 90 or more. It's bigger than even a big dinosaur. So we've talked in class about how the big whale, uh, the blue whale is the biggest thing that ever has lived. These tooth whales are orcas and few can defeat them. They like to hunt seals and to catch them and eat them. The narwhal, narwhal's one tusk sticks out like a horn. It looks so much like a one-horned unicorn. All whales hold their breath when they dive down below and when they come up, let it out with a blow. Before we go deeper, let's all wave hello to our mammal pals, dolphins. That's them down below. A dolphin can see in the night, wonder why? Echolocation, it works like an eye. It sends out a click and the click bounces back. And the sound of that click helps the dolphin keep track of where it is going and which fish is where and whether some foe like a shark might be there. So he's sending out the clicks and it's helping him find where he is around other fish in the ocean. Shake hands with the octopus, isn't it great? With arm after arm just for hugging, yikes, eight. Dear Dick and sweet Sally, tell me, what would you think if I told you the octopus shoots out dark ink? It squirts out the ink in some enemy's face and then swims away to a much safer place. Now we're going into the twilight zone, which is 660 feet to 3,300 feet under the surface of the ocean. All of the fights that are fought in the, of all of the fights that are fought in the sea, there's one that's the biggest, if you're asking me. Do I hear you asking? I'm so glad you did. It's sperm whale versus giant squid. Like all whales, the sperm whale must come up for air, but this one can dive and stay way down there for two hours or more at 3,000 feet, shopping for giant squid to eat. Now we're going into the dark zone. That's 3,300 feet to 13,200 feet under the surface of the ocean. Get out your flashlights, it's dark way down here and the fish are beginning to look very queer. The Gigantora and the Big Mouth Eel, the whip nose which comes with its own rod and reel. Down here it is always as black as the night, so many fish here have their very own light. They use it to locate a mate or some prey. Food hunting is hard like this day after day. So we talked this morning about the angler fish that has a light that is like a lantern on, on the front of its head. Now we go down to the abyss, 13,200 feet to 19,800 feet under the surface. You won't find many creatures this deep in this deep cold sea. Sea, cumber, sea cucumber, sea spider, and tripod are three. The abyss has a carpet of thick yucky muck. Animals have legs, so they will not get stuck. So they've adapted, the animals that live down here have adapted to have legs so they don't get stuck down there. Now we're in the trench. 19,800 feet and deeper. Before we go up, it is really a must that you visit the vents, which are cracks in Earth's crust. It is up through these vents that the hot water spout and warm up these clams and these worms here about. Giant clams and tube worms have enough things to eat because this deep spot has unusual heat. Oh, 
Oh, say can you see by my undersea clock, it is time the fair Glover got back to the dock. And now that our trip below sea is all done, I will bet that you too have a wish for some. Sun. So that is the wish for a fish and took us through the different layers of the ocean, the different ocean zones, the sunny zone, the twilight zone, the dark zone, also called the midnight zone, the abyss, and the trench at the very, very bottom. So the challenge for our class today is to imagine what kind of strange creature you could come up with and draw a picture of it and tell us how that creature adapts to living where it lives in the ocean. Uh, we can't wait to see what you come up with and um, we will see you all soon. Bye.